Hallucigenia! What it what is that? Am I hallucinating? Well yes, that's that's where the name comes from, though you're not hallucinating. That is that was a real animal. Um somehow. Uh, and there are actually three different species underneath the Hallucigenia genus. H. Sparsa, H. Fortis, and H. Hongmia. And they are believed to be Lobopodia, which are panarthropods and are related to arthropods, velvet worms, and water bears. But Hallucigenia sticks out because it's, it's like, what, 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 what are we even looking at? And the answer is, eh, you aren't really sure? They were very small, between 0.5 and 5.5 centimeters long. And in terms of how they lived and how they functioned, it's, it's hard to say. There's a lot we still don't know about Hallucigenia, mostly because for a while we, we weren't even sure what we were looking at. They were weird. Really, really weird. And the type species, Hallucigenia sparsa, was originally described by Charles Walcott who thought he was looking at a species of polycheate worm, known as Canadia. Later, it was determined that, uh, no, 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 that's, that's not, that's not a Canadia. That, that is something else. Simon Conway Morris would re-describe the animal in 1977, and he's the one who proposed the name Hallucigenia due to its bizarre appearance and resulted in what was believed at the time to be a proper interpretation of what the animal was. Uh, but later it was found that even this was, was, was not right. See, in 1991, Lars Ramskold and Hao Jiangguang were also looking at the animal and working with additional specimens that had been found over the years. And as they continued looking into it, they were like, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. We're gonna perform a magic trick. We're gonna take this fossil, all right, all right, see, 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 watch, 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 and do this. Ta-da! Yeah, the major mistake that Morris had made was he basically described the animal upside down, walking on the defensive spines, interpreting them as legs. In his defense, I mean, look at it, what? Come on, he's, he did his best. But yes, now it's believed that, oh, those are actually defensive spines, and... The, the, the tentacle things are, are the legs, and, and this is the head. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We're making, we're making some progress. Further analysis have been conducted over the years that have slightly altered the layout. But as weird as they are, unlike the Tully monster, there isn't tremendous debate regarding where they fit in the web of life. No one seems to question that these were panarthropods, and panarthropods can get really really weird, so that's fair. The problem that paleontologists have with hallucigenia is how it relates to other panarthropods. We know they were one, but were they related to the others? I mean, they had to be, but how closely? And where did they divulge? And it, there's a lot of questions regarding where they're supposed to be exactly underneath that umbrella, but we know they're supposed to be somewhere in that umbrella, so hey, that's that's at least something. They would have lived during the Middle Cambrian in what is now Canada and China, but they may have had a worldwide distribution as while many of their fossils don't have their entire structure visible, their spines do seem to like fossilizing to a degree, and their spines have been found all over the place, meaning that during that period, hallucigenia may have been a very widespread type of animal seen pretty much all over the place, though again, it's not 100% confirmed. Regardless though, they were freaking weird. And there's still many questions regarding their exact behavior, what they ate, how they would have behaved, all sorts of things. But they were small little bizarre animals that saw significant success during their time, so, you know, okay, you're weird, you're a weirdo. But you're doing a good job, buddy, and we're proud of you. Sorry for keeping you upside down for over a decade. That was a minor mistake on our part. Again, you look weird. It happens! And with that, a special thank you. Go out to my Apex Predators, Arthur Roy, Metal for Life guy, and Anti-Raven. Till next time!
this is darkness, and I bid you all a bond farewell.